in this budget. Joining us now to debate from our nation's capital, Andrew Coyne, national editor and columnist for the McLean's Magazine, Steve Poshman, vice president of research at the C.D. Howe Institute, and Aaron Weir, economist with the United Steelworkers Union. Okay, everybody, I want to, first of all, thank you uh, for joining uh, our discussion this evening. I also Aaron, where do you think the public is on the, um, the speed with which we need to balance the books right now? Well, it's very difficult to say. I mean, a lot of public opinion polling will show that most people want lower taxes and also that most people want more government services. Um, so, you know, there's some different uh, directions that you can take on that. But on balance, I think most ordinary Canadians are much more concerned about the job market than they are about the government's deficit. I mean, the worst feature of this economic crisis was that about half a million Canadians uh, were laid off. And... Um, Fewer than half of all the officially unemployed Canadians uh, have received employment insurance benefits. So I, I think the priority really needs to be to get Canadians back to work and also to help out the Canadians who are unemployed through no fault of their own, even if that does involve uh, running a somewhat larger deficit in the short term. Okay, that's a good segue for us to broaden our discussion now from deficits, uh, although I'm sure Andrew would love to have at you on that. We need a potentially bigger deficit right now, but hold off, Andrew, because... Well, I'd like we're... to have him on some points, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's coming. It's coming. In balance, they're still projecting a, a very you know, minor deficit of just over a billion dollars uh, six years out, but what's your view on the path to getting there? Well, when consumers reduce their spending and businesses reduce their investment and Canada's trade balance turns negative, the only way to stabilize the economy is for the government to ramp up its spending and investments. So I, I think it's entirely uh, reasonable and appropriate uh, to run stimulative deficits in the short term. I would agree with the other panelists that we need to reduce the deficit in the longer term. And what I found troubling about uh, Finance Minister Flaherty's interview was that he completely ruled out the possibility of reversing any of his tax cuts. If we're serious about balancing the budget in the long run, we need to get federal revenues back on some kind of a sustainable footing. Uh, yet, as you mentioned in your summary of the budget, the government is going ahead and further cutting corporate income tax rates in the face of this deficit. Although at the same time, Andrew, they are saying they're going to increase payroll, some payroll taxes as well. So is it a case of the government, you know, takes with one hand, gives away with the other? Well, first of all, there's no shortage of revenues. Revenues are in this budget are forecast to grow at nearly 7% per year. Let's hope that that's true, if they're, that they're not just indulging in rosy scenarios. Uh, so the notion that we're, that we're suffering from a shortage of revenues is, is ridiculous. Uh, if you're talking about the EI uh, uh, increases, that gets into real theology about to what extent is EI supposed to be you know, self-financing, to what extent is it independent from government. And I'm not sure. I think I'm kind of agnostic on all those things. The main point is I do agree with the minister that raising taxes is the easy way out. There are lots of ways in which you could cut spending. It wouldn't require draconian cuts, a la Paul Martin. What's actually required is actually quite modest cuts. Uh, I might go a little deeper than Finn would, but, but not, uh, not a huge amount. The problem with this budget is there really aren't any cuts at all. Last September, in the fiscal update, they projected that the total spending over the next five years would be $1.247 trillion. The budget projected it being $1.245 trillion. Total spending cuts over five years in this budget is $2 billion. That's $400 million a year on a budget of $250 billion. That's like, what, two, less than two-tenths of one percent. So to call this draconian, or to, I think the, the minister was telling the reporters today that it was a tough budget, uh, it's, it's a bit hard to take. Well, everything's Almost. relative. You know, uh, Finn, the last few budgets that he's brought in have all increased spending by, I think, about 6 7% a year. So if spending... Aaron, let me get you on this. Um, the size of the stimulus package. Uh, you heard Andrew say before we didn't need to do it. You heard the government today, Mr. Flaherty, in his speech, uh, boasting about the fact there were 16,000, I think he said, different programs out there as part of the economic action plan, as the government called it. Enough stimulus? Too much stimulus? Uh, just about right? Where would you put it? Well, I'd actually vote for more stimulus. I mean, I think certainly the package that has been put out there uh, supported a significant number of jobs in the Canadian economy. Uh, but despite that, the budget uh, envisions uh, actually a higher unemployment rate this year than last year. So I think we actually need more stimulus uh, to get Canadians back to work. And in particular, I think we need more money uh, on employment insurance to help those uh, Canadians who, who don't have jobs. Finn, can I get your view on that? 
Well, he, he, Aaron's right that EI is a program that hasn't working, been working terribly well and uh, needs needs an overhaul. But that's a, that's a longer term project. It certainly isn't something that the government was going to address in any serious uh, way in this round. Uh, I do want to take uh, take a moment though to say something a little bit kind about the longer term economic impact of the trajectory the uh, the government has been on uh, on, on the tax front. They, they deserve some uh, some respect for it. There's a, as as we said, there's a lot of uh, sort of unnecessary stuff going on in the spending side. Be a got to give them credit for uh, for sticking to a plan that does see a very positive outcome on the investment environment for Canada, and that does well for a lot of us. Aaron, I want to go right back to you on this because if Mr. Flaherty also in his budget speech today, you can tell it is a huge deal for him to be the lowest corporate tax jurisdiction in the G7. He's proud of what he sees as his ability to get this country there. Why don't you share his pride over that? Well, I don't think there's any evidence that the corporate tax cuts that have been enacted so far have actually uh, increased investment as Finn uh, uh, claims. I mean, uh, the Paul Martin government uh, cut corporate taxes uh, starting in 2000 uh, when the federal rate uh, was above 29 percent, uh, down to 18 percent uh, this year. Um, and there was no increase of business investment as a share of the economy uh, since 2000, uh, even before uh, the economic crisis. I think another really important thing that a lot of people don't understand about corporate taxes is that when an American company repatriates profits from Canada to the United States, it is subject to the U.S. federal corporate income tax rate uh, on those profits, minus whatever taxes it's already paid in Canada. So as long as Canada's combined federal provincial taxes are at least as high as the American rate, uh, there's no problem and these U.S. companies uh, don't owe any American tax on their Canadian profits. Uh, now though that Ottawa and the provinces are slashing their corporate tax rates far below the American rate, that won't actually give money uh, to business operations owned by American companies in Canada. It'll just force those corporations to pay the difference uh, back to the U.S. Treasury. So um, the Canadian government is really giving up revenue uh, for, for, for no good purpose. I guess they're helping out uh, the American government, but, but that's about it. Andrew, in, in which case do you think it is not a valuable goal of Mr. Flaherty's to try to have the lowest corporate tax rates in the G7? Well, I'm less interested in the comparison between countries' rates. That's interesting, I and mean, you can kind of brag about it. I'm more interested in the absolute level of the corporate tax rates, or indeed tax rates in general. And that's just, frankly, a matter of arithmetic. The higher the, the tax rate that you have, the higher the pre-tax rate of return has to be to be able to deliver the kind of return after tax that's going to induce you to make investments. Supposing you need 10% rate of return, for example, to make that investment. If the tax rate's 50%, then you're going to need 20% before tax to make the investment. You cut that tax rate to 33%, you only need a 15% rate of return. So all those investments that might have been economic, uh, you know, under a 33% tax rate become economic now. So. You know, that's why you want to bring tax rates down, is you want to lower that wedge between the pre-tax and after-tax rate of returns. It's nothing to do with, I mean, it's, it's interesting, as I say, to be competitive in other countries, and it probably has some effects on location decisions at the margin, but I, I think that comparison is sometimes overblown. And in, two, in 2015, so six years after the recession, uh, and after these supposed you know, spending cuts, by their own budget's reckoning, they'll be spending 13.2% of GDP uh, in program spending, that's more than the Liberals were in 2006. So after all this, you know, we're, we're going to, you know, raise up spending so we can lay waste to Ottawa, they will actually have a larger Ottawa relative to the economy than the Liberals left them. Aaron, you want to okay. go for that? Well, well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I do. I mean, 13.2% of GDP is not a high level of federal program expenditure. I mean, you're right, it is a percentage point higher than what uh, the Liberals spent. Uh, but if you go back before that, it's really the lowest level of uh, federal uh, program spending that we've uh, seen since uh, the early 1950s. So I would argue uh, that uh, fe the federal government's actually spending too little and uh, really needs to invest more in a lot of uh, infrastructure and uh, public programs. Similarly, on the revenue side, if you look at that as a percentage of gross domestic product, today's budget was boasting about the fact that it's at the lowest level since 1961. So I think that kind of uh, counters Andrew's point about uh, there not being any shortage of revenue. Well, now I'm regretting raising percent of GDP because that <laughs> is the favorite measure of people who want to expand the state because as long as spending doesn't grow faster than the economy, you can say it hasn't grown at all. Uh, I much prefer, and, and which is ridiculous, because it basically says spending should always go up, not because it needs to, but just because it can. I much prefer the measure of real dollars, that is inflation-adjusted adjust, dollars per citizen. Uh, and we are now spending 
real dollars per citizen 50% more than we did a decade ago. Have you got 50% more services than you had a decade ago? No, you do not. So it's that, that's, I think, a much better measure of how much spending has already grown, which now the, the government proposes to freeze it for a couple of years at that extraordinary level, which does not count as restraint to me. I want to thank all of you for uh, joining us tonight in our Ottawa studios. To